looking up to our uh, NIH colleagues, and they're, they're using this web meeting uh, server. So at NIH, they have a uh, video telecommunications service. And we tested it here yesterday. So, Mona, can you hear me? No, guess not. But, yes. oh, you can hear me. Yes, good morning, and uh, <laughs> good morning and welcome. Uh, we're all convened here. Uh, your likeness is on the screen, and uh, your slides are visible. So uh, if you'd like to go ahead and introduce your, uh, yourself in the presentation. We can hear you well. There's a 10 second delay. Uh, so. Um, also, just for your general visions in this field, I've just really been impressed with uh, what you're bringing to it and really appreciate that. So I'm Mona Hicks. I'm a program director at the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, and I'm one of the people that's working on this FitBeer. Uh, we're calling it a platform for international collaboration. And um, if you're like me, when I uh, was an you know, in a research scientist at an academic institution, and I'd hear people from different funding agencies come and tell me what things were going on and what they were doing, I would often think, well, that's all well and good, but w what's in this for me? So I thought, well, I'd try to start right out with that. What, what's in this, this uh, informatics system for you? And what I'm trying to depict with this picture is that Actually, at this moment in time, there really there's nothing in there for you. Uh, the cupboard is bare. We are, are just developing the system, and we don't actually have uh, data in there right now for you to use. Uh, but, but coming soon, what we're hoping is actually to have a very rich set of uh, data on traumatic brain injury, research data, high quality, that uh, scientists like you could access and uh, hopefully work in collaboration with the people collecting the data to find answers to really complex questions. So this slide says big data. Big data is a term a lot of people are using. Maybe this isn't big data. Maybe this is almost big data. But it's going to be some of the biggest data sets that um, are available on traumatic brain injury. So for us, it's, it's, a, it's big. And what's in it for us as the funding agencies? Uh, for, for us, we're really very interested in accelerating knowledge on traumatic brain injury. It's a, it's a major problem, and we see this as a way to get answers faster and help uh, people with traumatic brain injury improve uh, better and have better outcomes. And as you probably know from some of the earlier sessions and maybe your own research, uh, traumatic brain injury is a major public health problem, and it's a very complex problem because it affects people of all ages. The severities of the injury can be very, very mild to devastating to, to actually death. There's multiple causes, and there's multiple types of injuries to the brain. 
And there's also variable outcomes. So we have a lot of moving parts that make this a very complex problem. And the diagnostic and prognostic tools, once again, as you probably all know, are, are insufficient. We're unable to detect people that have mild injuries. Right now, it's a basically sort of an occult injury. These people tend to live, so we, we have very limited knowledge about what actually the injury to the brain is. We aren't uh, very good at predicting who's going to have good and bad outcomes, and um, we're not good at monitoring response to treatments. So we, we, there's many gaps in our tool sets. This is a way we're hoping to um, improve some of those. There's lots of treatments, um, but they lack solid evidence. This is something that Andrew might have mentioned earlier today. And the, the randomized controlled trials aren't succeeding. Uh, we've sponsored many of these. They tend to be very expensive. They are a commitment from patients and families. And so far, none of them have successfully demonstrated effect. So Fitbit, what's in it for all of us? Well, we see this as a way to provide a rich data test beds for tool and biomark development, to enable comparative effectiveness research, and ultimately lead to the development of better novel therapies. It's also an opportunity for consolidation of resources. So all of these things are expensive and um, Right now, across funding agencies in the United States and around the world, there's more than, this is an old uh, thing. I say, here I say more than 600 traumatic brain injury studies posted on clinicaltrials.gov. I think if you go in there today, it's probably closer to 1,200. So there's a lot of activity going on. Can we consolidate some of this? And, and also, research is distributed across multiple agencies, and it's almost impossible today in these times of sort of funding constraints for one agency to do all of this alone. So by working together, it, it gives us the chance to do to more, to build bigger systems. And um, there's also an opportunity for collaboration and team science. This is known to be an effective way to advance knowledge. We think that this, this FITBER informatics system also has the potential to increase scientific rigor and efficiency and ultimately, of course, lead to better patient outcomes. So where did the idea for an informatic system for traumatic brain injury research come from? Like, who, who, where, who wanted to do this? And it, it really came from multiple sources. I think there was really multiple drivers. For me personally, one of the biggest things that led me to become so interested in this was a workshop that we held in, in 2007. And at that workshop, we asked experts to see if they could propose better ways to classify traumatic brain injury. The current system was felt to be insufficient, that we weren't matching treatments to pathologies. And so we said, well, what, what should we do? What can we do better? And uniformly, the people at the workshop said, we agree, we, we do need to do something more precise, more accurate, more prognostic, but without data, we cannot really do that in an informed way. So that for, was a huge driver. Now, the impact study that Andrew Moss led, that was another huge driver. He, you know, as you know, retrospectively tried to combine data from uh, previous clinical trials and said it was such an agonizing experience that there had to be a better way. There had to be a better way to do some things up front to make uh, meta analysis easier later. ADNI, the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, another huge driver for the idea of bringing people together to consolidate data and allow people access to promote science. NDAR, the National Database for Autism Research, this was a sort of a forerunner to the FITBER system. It allowed us to get this system up and running much faster than if we started de novo. The NIDER TBI model systems, that's the National Institute for Disability and Rehabilitation Research. They've been collecting data on uh, people that have rehabilitation services following moderate and severe TBIs for decades and have a huge database 
on this subset of patients, it's been very effective in finding answers. So that was another thing that said this is a good idea, we should do it. The International Common Data Element Project for TBI, this was another truly an international effort to come up with um, standardized definitions and data coding. And it, this is pr uh, providing the data dictionary for Fitbeer. And uh, another study that has helped is, well, we tested that. We said, well, these common data elements, can anyone actually use them? Are they feasible? And are they informative? And so a pilot study called Track TBI that was led by Jeff Manley has gone through this process and has demonstrated that, yes, they can be done, and yes, they are informative. So all of these things were sort of the background, and others as well that I'm not mentioning, to building this informatic system. So finally, I'm going to tell you what it is. Well, it's a collaborative effort between the U.S. Department of Defense and NIH. It was launched in the summer of 2011, so we're two years in. And it's, a, it's really an informatic system. We originally, I think I called it a database. That's what I thought it was. But it, it really is more. It's a, it is a searchable, shareable clinical research. It also has other tools. It has an electronic data collection tools. It has operational support. This is huge because um, it's one thing to build a system. It's another thing to actually help people use it and make it user-friendly and you know, able to do what you all need it to do. We also have um, groups of people that are serving on policy committees to provide policies and a governance committee for oversight. And we're hoping to bring in analytical tools so this can really be a very powerful system for users. So what are we aiming to do? Well, of course, facilitate meta-analysis. Um, but also enable new analysis, the idea of the crowdsourcing, and um, also link seeming, seemingly disparate research. And I think here there's a lot of potential, a lot of excitement. Um, you know, we know that traumatic brain injury can happen to people of all ages, and people will often tell me, they say, you know, traumatic brain injury in a child is very different than in an adult. And that doesn't surprise me at all. But what we need to know is, how is it different? And when do these transitions happen? You know, is a 12-year-old different from a 15-year-old? Is a 2-year-old different from a 5-year-old? That's the kind of thing we could get by um, consolidating data from people across all ages and starting to look at these differences. The time factor, there's huge concerns now that uh, traumatic brain injury may lead to neurodegenerative diseases over time. Where do you start? I mean, you, do you just start looking at the 65-year-olds? I mean, you know there's a continuum there. It's much like the Alzheimer's thing. You need to look at these things over that continuum. And of course, the severity. You know, on the one end, we have people with very mild injuries, often called concussion. And people think, well, that's not the same as TB, severe TBI. Well, we don't really know. There, it could be very similar, just, you know, that the magnitude is less, but the actual pathophysiological mechanisms are the same. Or they could be different. So this, once again, allows us to bring this data in and start looking at it across these multiple dimensions. So how, how is this going to work? Well, I think there's four important components. One is you need standardization. You need a technological infrastructure and support, but you also need governance and policies to ensure high quality data and reasonable access. And you need a collaborative research community. So the standardization uh, is well underway. It harks back to a uh, multiple agency international effort that uh, was held in 2009, where we came forward with um, a s recommendations um, we, these were modified so that they were more relevant also for children. This took place the following year. Then we started looking at these in practice and we said, you know, this is a great start, but there are some operational concerns and so we put out what we're calling version 2 that was last year. And right now they're framed in sort of modules. We have a core module of data uh, definitions that we should be collected or data 
that we feel should be collected you know, in almost all studies. And then we have data sets that are more relevant to people interested in epidemiology. We have some that are more relevant for acute hospital studies, also for rehab and outpatient studies and concussion and mild TBI. And within these, there's a lot of overlap, but uh, there's also some things that are, are distinct. And where can this be found? Well, it's posted on websites. We have a, it's an NINDS Common Data Elements website. It's also posted on the, it's linked to the FitBear website. There's a series of publications. Uh, Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation has nine articles from the original recommendation. Journal of Neurotrauma posted, uh, published the pediatric modifications and more recently the uh, of course, you need technological infrastructure and support. And Matt McAuliffe is going to uh, follow my talk uh, and tell you more about this. You need governance, and um, we do have a governing committee across agencies. We have um, within that executive committee, that's people like me and Matt and Doug Gibson at the Department of Defense, who are sort of the managers. We have a strategic vision committee to give us ideas about how we can optimize this. We link into the Common Data Elements Steering Committee. These are a lot of the users that are actually trying to use the system. We have design and development team, an operations team, and we have policy committees. The data sharing policy is actually um, under development. It's a work in progress. Uh, right now, we're asking that people to upload what we call baseline data quarterly. Their outcomes are sort of their results data is held back, but it's available on a rolling basis after the study is completed. So um, six months after the study ends, it becomes available to other people that are putting data into the system. And then after that, it becomes available to, at 12 months to all approved users. So people that want access do have to fill out a simple form telling us about who they are and why they want the data. And importantly, though, we're trying to build a system in where it could be made available earlier by request so that if you have an idea and you'd like to get started before their study ends, propose that, ideally work with them, um, at, but it might not be approved. If, it, if there were elements in it that would jeopardize the current study, then we would probably wait till the end. Now, also really the big thing is it needs a collaborative research community. And we're fortunate in this regard in that the traumatic brain injury research does seem to have an international uh, base. And lots of people that are really like-minded in, in willingness to work together and share. And we're trying to set up this, or we, have, we are setting this up. It's this international initiative for traumatic brain injury. We had our first meeting in October 2011. And um, so there are many opportunities to collaborate and that funding agencies are trying to put out incentives and opportunities to do so. One is this INTBIR. So there's a, a research initiative out there at this time. Grants are uh, under review, so we don't know which one will be selected, but there is funding for this international effort. Uh, there's also a funding initiative for chronic, chronic traumatic encephalopathy interested in looking at neuropathology and neuroimaging correlations. There's initiatives for pilot projects on sports-related concussion. This is partly or largely due to a generous gift from the National Football League to support some of this. Um, and we're also trying to pull in legacy data. Some of these large data sets that we think are actually very high quality. Right now they're in individual databases, see if we can't pull some of them in, and we're hoping to put an RFA out for that in the near future. The Department of Defense and the Veterans Affairs uh, group, they also have a, a initiative on the street. It's very large. It's going to fund a very large consortium to look at chronic effects of neurotrauma. All of these initiatives, the people collecting the data will be, you know, told that they, one of the requirements is that they upload their data into the FIPR system. The National Intrepid Center of Excellence is, you know, trying to, is focusing on military personnel that have come back from some of the uh, recent engagements and um, have had exposures to traumatic brain injury. 
Fitbeer have a, a collecting data. They've also expressed interest in putting it into Fitbeer. And of course, all of the agencies, we fund many investigator-initiated projects. Some of the people that we're funding are presenting here at the CARS meeting. And um, over the next year or so, we have 18 studies that are sort of lined up that will begin uploading data. So what's next? Well, this I just want to mention is that it's one thing to build a great database, but it's really, really important to think about what you're going to do with that at the beginning. You know, the data output, the purpose, the goals, all of that is just as important as putting the data in. And so we've been emphasizing that a lot of the studies have clear hypotheses uh, that they're working around so that at the end, they'll, there will be what they need to answer these questions. Um, we, we plan to evaluate and reevaluate what we're doing for value and productivity. We want to build what users want and need. We plan to support some demonstration projects. Someone called me and said, you know, I have a small data set, but one of my um, friends also has a small data set. And if we put these together, he goes, I think we have enough data to answer this question now. So this is the kind of thing that will clearly accelerate um, research. And so we want to find it, figure out a way to support that. We want to align with other databases and projects. And um, we also are trying to expand to include preclinical data for more of a, a translational pipeline. And so the vision, the vision is truly a knowledge network to accelerate research and inform TBI clinical practice. Uh, ultimately, it'd be great to actually be able to pull in data from um, actual practice. Uh, these are all sort of uh, aspirational goals at this time. And um, the last slide is Fitbir, a platform for international collaboration. Low hanging fruit or reaching for the stars? And I, I ask this because, on the one hand, I do see this as low hanging fruit. I see this as one of the most obvious things that we should and could be doing to accelerate knowledge. But there's also huge, exciting things that we can be reaching for, biomarkers for traumatic brain injury, not going to be easy. This is a, a, a way to, to help us get there. Um, comparative effectiveness research, not going to be easy, but this is a kind of platform that could, could bring us answers to these things. So that's all I have. I, I think I used up